Okay, Ruler, settle down. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get pre-orders of all the upcoming Force of Will sets, as well as releases of previous sets after they come out. CCGprime.com with over 100,000 Force of Will singles, as well as out-of-print boxes from the past, and TCG accessories, as well as FowlLibrary.com, a wonderful resource for deck lists, article discussions, and more. Check them out at FowlLibrary.com, as well as these amazing patrons. Special thanks to guest lecturer patrons Shu Kong Fu, Vite Ramen, and Maxime Van He. Thank you for your support. Class is in session. Hey the Rulers, DMO73 here, bringing you another feature match for the week, this time featuring a deck, well, a new Frontiers version of a deck by the wonderful Charlie Jamil, uh, aka XD. You can check him out in on YouTube, and you can also check out the deck profile of the Wanderer version of this Turn Zero Loki deck using the link in the description. So thanks to him for shipping us the list, at least Wanderer version. We're trying it out in New Frontiers. As always, if you haven't already, check out the link in the description to get your pre-orders in for Game of Gods Revolution. If Odyssey still has product available, you can check that out to make sure you have the product when it comes in. So if you haven't already seen his video, the idea of Turn Zero Loki is Loki has this really interesting interaction, especially if going on the coin, where you can kind of, before your opponent even gets to take an action, set up a couple of floodgates um, right out the gate. And against certain decks, that can be really, really devastating. Uh, and we're playing against David Curris, who's playing uh, just a pretty straightforward Kakia control list. Um, but I think this will kind of showcase... Uh, this will be a good matchup to showcase exactly how Floodgates can impact a deck like Kaguya, especially a deck that just has not a ton of removal. So, we will be going into it, and let's see how it goes. So first turn for David, he hits that Magic Stone of Knowledge. Doesn't get to be able to do Judgment there, but that's okay for us. We can use Coin to produce three will with Dinner Time, and then Order Awakened a Scheherazade. So the way this works with Scheherazade is because technically in the current CR, choosing to order something goes before choosing to awaken something. You can determine that you're going to order the Scheherazade, but then still use the ruler to awaken Sherry, uh, and you will be able to make that happen. So Sherry will come in recovered, uh, but the order will come in tapped and then recover um, next turn. It's very interesting. And so because we're awakening Scheherazade, we get to go get a one-drop addition and a one-drop resonator. Uh, we're grabbing Altasing Secret Hideout here because it is the easiest way to protect the floodgate we actually care about, knowing that um, the thing that we want to most um, impact for Kaguya, at least right off the bat, is their ability to recover stones with Hanzo. So we're going to use the Witch of Unblowing Wind. This deck has a lot of one of uh, one drops designed to be able to get you the floodgate you need. So Witch of Unblowing Wind says, cool, even if you get a Hanzo resolved, you're not going to get to double your stones. So you're essentially going to go, you know, kind of net zero off of the Hanzo, at least off the bat. And you also have to deal with the fact that I will have Loki to destroy your Hanzo. So then we're going to call stone and go ahead and play Dolly off of the stone. Dolly's going to go ahead and draw us a card, and so we just pass the turn. So overall, that, that's the kind of the line. The idea is we use dinner time to be able to do Scheherazade right off the bat uh, so that we can set up a nice little floodgate. This made even better when you introduce Loki enters the game of gods, because that's where the turn zero comes in. You use Loki enters the game of gods to produce green, then the green uses dinner time, then the dinner time orders Sherry. So before your opponent even gets a main phase, you've put a Sherry awakened onto the field. Yield. So, now David as the Kaki player, dealing with a board that has barrier, and the ability to not recover his own stuff, uh, has to figure out exactly how he's going to get through this. And meanwhile, still, if he does decide to order, has to then figure out how to protect from the Loki, who can just pop it for zero. You see his hand there is a Hanzo, he's got War It Shall Be, he's got uh, Dance of Spirits, which isn't going to help him at this point. Does have the Prisia, does have two First Boons, those First Boons are unfortunately dead, so half of his hand right now just is dead. And War It Shall Be also won't recover a stone. Um, that's the biggest piece here. So War It Shall Be is his first card for the turn, sure, but it doesn't recover um, any resources for him. He just has to let that be a pay one I have now searched. Um, which is, again, one of the reasons why we went for Witch of the Unblowing Wind first. Just say, hey, you're not going to get a lot of value out of this card. Um, 
you're going to have to play a lot slower than you're used to, and that is usually enough to do what I want. So he does just go ahead and get the Galileo and pass the turn there. Doesn't try to go in for the Hanzo because he has no way to protect it, and he knows that it would absolutely leave him completely tapped out um, because he couldn't even pay into the Hanzo to um, recover any moons or recover any stones. So we're gonna go swing in with the Scheherazade. We're going to attempt to resolve another dinner time using Dolly to uh, make the stone green to, for a choice of non-random. He says, sure, that's fine. I have no response. We'll go ahead and pop the Scheherazade here and then immediately reorder Awaken another Scheherazade. Um, again, because we can use the uh, J, uh, the ruler to do it, we are in, and the ruler had recovered at the beginning of the turn, we are in fine shape to be able to go off here. So now we get to grab a second set of floodgates here, being uh, Witch of the Fallen Kingdom, which means that no longer can search. This then turns off that Prissia that's in his hands. It turns off more, uh, double turns off, or it shall be, um, really helps us feel a lot more comfortable there. And grab Dark Sun. Obviously, right now, Dark Sun's not going to get us any entities because uh, he doesn't have anything on field, but it does prevent him when we're Loki from being able to banish things for cost. Which for this deck mainly just refers to banishing moons off of Hanzo. He won't be able to banish moons off of Hanzo. See those top two cards there are a Hanzo and a Kotaro. Um, I imagine we probably see the Kotaro kept and the Hanzo shipped. Yeah, exactly, because he already has the one Hanzo in hand. Um, it doesn't necessarily do too much to have a second one right now. We'll use the other stone to play another Dolly and draw a card. So just setting him up to a floodgate and saying, look at all this damage I have on your board uh, that's barriered uh, in a deck that does not really have much of any way to do spot removal, especially through barrier. David draws for turn. We do see he has that Kotaro now. probably looking at that could there is a world here where you go into the Hanzo because it like even then though it feels really bad because the witch of unblowing wind makes playing a Hanzo feel really worse it like feels practically unplayable into a Loki um, because before he makes any moons we're just gonna kill the Hanzo uh, and then so he won't be able to pay into it and then if he chooses he wants to pay into it he'd have to use his stone which would then not recover uh, so he would essentially be tapping himself out just to make moons and that doesn't feel great at all in comes Kotaro who's gonna try to nuke the board of additions in response we are going to kill it with Loki so he'll still get one moon out of it but uh and he gets my additions but then his board is completely cleared and he has to tap to call stone now if he hits six sage stone here there is a world where he gets to grab feath sing which isn't too bad uh if he had one in hand the problem is he doesn't have one in hand and he can't search for one um so he would have had to have one in hand already to be able to make use of it otherwise right now he's staring down 2400 damage Calling another stone, we hit Ragnarok stone. Moving into combat, we will go for four, take him down to 24, and then another four down to 2,000. He says, that's fine, I will take all of that. Scheherazade goes in for eight. Nothing in that hand is going to be able to stop it. cast a lightning rod mermaid this is another one of the little cards that we are using as a tech slot um, we lost it's one of those things where there are certain matchups where we want a specific addition to be the floodgate versus the resonator uh, and so my idea being um, you floodgate out lightning rod mermaid and the addition that you care about so that lightning rod mermaid soaks up the removal that possibly does the addition because we have a lot of entity destruction right now in the game um, rather than just straight J slash res um, but it's also helpful because you got rid of my secret hideout to just go ahead and play lightning round mermaid to say hey uh, once again you do not have good spot removal options um, and even less so because the lightning round mermaid is just going to soak one for free Calling another stone after floating some green. Does hit the other six sage stone. Looks like we're going to see 
pretty much the only play that he feels comfortable making, which is to order in Galileo. Galileo is safe uh, because it has barrier, so it won't have to worry about my Loki popping it, and it will make his moon into those 10 tens. Even if his moon swing, though, he doesn't get to recover any stones because of Witch of the Unblowing Wind. Um, so he does get to at least put a body on board here that is bigger. It can serve as a nice little blocker, but it does completely tap him out to make this play, which puts him in a very vulnerable position. Going into recovery. At this point in time, he's completely tapped out. We have him at 12 life, and we are threatening well more than 12 damage on board, so we can actually just start swinging. Go in for four. Get a block out of a moon, go in for four. We get another block out of a moon. In response, we're gonna go ahead and make some green will. Thanks to Dolly being able to make our stone not random. Swing in for eight to say, hey, are you gonna try to um, block it or what are we doing? Uh, I don't have any way to be able to stop the block if he uses the Galileo. But again, then he'd be staring down uh, 10 damage from the other three things on board. But also, if he lets it connect at all, um, he's dead regardless. So he does block there. We take him down to two with the three remaining attackers. So down to 200. And then we have an, a third time this game, a dinner time into an awakened Scheherazade. The addition doesn't matter. Ultimately, the one drop resonator is what matters. And we are going to be grabbing... The one drop to finish the game, which is uh, Lucifer. The defeated one wing to drain him that last 500 damage to get him down to negative three. And we move on to game two. So that was a good, you know, the turn. That was a good example of kind of how this deck is designed to operate. It sets up the floodgates that are particularly devastating for your opponent to really disrupt their flow, and then you just grind them out, continually stacking more and more floodgates on top of it until they can't do anything. Do get to go, unfortunately, get to go second this time. We see a six sage stone here, and we are going to, we start to take an action, but we say, you know what, let's hold and see what might come out of, uh, what, what David might be trying to do for his first turn. We see a stone call from him. We also see a six sage stone come down. We're going to see, and war it shall be. In response to the war it shall be, we try to do something a little maybe off cuff. Try to cast Loki enters the game of gods here. Draw a card and produce a blue. Grabs the Hanzo. He's going to get to recover. I think the hope here is that there's a world where we try to go. Um, Loki enters the game of gods. Produce green. Hit the dinner time. Go off and stop him from searching. Um, but ultimately, it's safer to just go for the blue line here. Um, because we have a way to be able to. deal with the Hanzo before he gets too much value out of it. So orders the Hanzo here does have his coin, determines the X value to be one. We're gonna go ahead and in response, quick cast order in a Volbo. Gets to draw us three cards and then we can pop the Hanzo before he has any more will. So he has a choice here. He can either use his coin to somehow protect the Hanzo or he can accept that the Hanzo is going to die, burn his coin to be able to get a second moon and recover a stone and go to our turn with just our turn two with just one will available, which will set him up to be able to use. Um, uh, we'll set him up to be able to use feasting if he has one. Um, ultimately, it doesn't look like it looks like a couple number 13s, a couple of uh, Prissia's. So not a ton of value to be had there.
during his end phase, we're going to see a Perseus Big Show. And then on his turn before draw, he gave us the opportunity. We're going to go ahead and remove all of the abilities from our Volmo. Kill Vomo. Loki enters the game of gods into dinner time into Shahrazad Awakened. Into dinner time into order awakened Shahrazad, which gets us a couple of cards. Now we are taking a chance here in that we say, you know what? I do not think you have another Hanzo in your hand right now. I genuinely think that the one you had was the one you had. So I don't want you finding another one. So at this point in time, because you already have some moons, green, which is also not nearly as important because you'll have will when the Hanzo comes into play anyway, that you can burn into the Hanzo. Um, so we are going to go ahead and just go ahead and grab which the fallen kingdom and the protection for it. Now, he does recover his ruler here, and that's specifically um, just an important thing to know as you talk about the Green Witch, is that Green Witch can't stop the recovery of rulers because rulers aren't entities. Uh, and Green Witch specifically talks about that your opponent's cards can't be recovered, like your entities can't be recovered. So that's just an important thing for you to note uh, if you were wondering about the card. David's hand looking pretty not great. You do see there's the feasting there. Finally found it. Does also have the Kaki enters the game of gods, so he could make more moons. Ultimately choosing to do a proactive first boon. Um, I think this is a little bit not correct, especially since he has that feasting in hand. He could have just as easily just passed the turn um, and then waited to be able to potentially cancel something that's more important, especially since then even if I try to destroy it with Shahrazad, he can then, you know, at least draw a card off of it with another Feetsing or using Feetsing's activate ability. Like there are things that he can do there. Ultimately though, tapping himself out to uh, draw three cards, uh, then just taking total damage. So a, a little bit of an unnecessary proactive risk. Maybe the thought was, well, I don't care about taking a little bit of damage. Uh, I'd rather just sink the will into here now when Jeremy's tapped out um, to not have to worry about get like to be able to give myself more options. trying to uh, make that stone uh, produce me some color. I do get it. We get to make green, which we will use for dinner time. Dinner time, we'll go ahead and pop our Scheherazade here. We we'll get Melfi off of the dinner time will. So one green into three will <laughs> is one green into three green into uh, green and two other of any color. And it's pretty great here for the flexibility of trying to set up some more stacks to use against our opponent. We make a Lucifer defeated one wing. And we use the green and we did actually have which of the unblowing winds in our hands. And then we're going to actually order a mistletane. Um, just to like hammer home the stack here. So if you're looking about what David isn't allowed to do right now, he's not allowed to search. He's not allowed to recover entities he control with abilities. He's not allowed to shoot my stuff because my stuff has barrier. And he's not allowed to activate the automat the activate abilities of any J slash resonators he controls. This means feetsing if ordered can't unorder. Uh, so that suddenly makes that card feel significantly worse. He also... Um, Mistletade being on the field means even without Dark Sun, he can't use Hanzo's ability to cancel anything, um, even if he did get into it. Um, ultimately, does choose to just call stone and hit a magic stone of knowledge there. The risk of the early six sage stones just really setting him up to be very low resource this turn. I'm not turn where he is steering down four, uh, eight, twelve, 
seven uh 19 21 damage um could be even could be lethal if i have a two drop to pitch with mistletane um and leaving himself over with just one will he does have a witch of the fallen kingdom to be able to potentially protect himself uh does have a feasting to be able to at least try to cancel something that i might try to play um ultimately though not the best position for him to be in does decide to go ahead and catch the Witch of the Fallen Kingdom uh, to prevent me from searching, just saying, hey, if you do have another Shahrazad, we're not gonna, that's gonna be a dead card in your hand, which is kind of good and also kind of not great because I do have the Mistletane. Um, so there's a world where if I did have a Shahrazad, I just, at this point, I just pitch it to the Mistletane to make her even bigger. Um, do see a Dark Sun there at the end of turn to make him banish a moon. So now Feasting is significantly less. We're going to go ahead and pitch a one drop to Mistletane to make her a 8-8 eight, eight currently, calling a stone. Now we get to start swinging in. Lucifer gets to go into the air for four, takes him down to 19 because he has no blockers. Currently also has no will that is usable because his ruler is tapped and the cards in his hand all cost at least some kind of color. Tried to see if there's a way for me to find uh, the damage this turn through a blocker. Swinging in for uh, eight. Trying to make a stone non-random. Hit a five, so that's going to produce blue, because I typically do evens for color choice. Do hit another odd, so that's two blue floating here. Say, okay, well, Mistletane's done her job. Let's go ahead and kill her. I need some more cards in my hand. I've got that floating blue. Let's use one of it for Volmol. Uh, Volmol getting me to be able to draw three more cards and refill my hand. Ultimately, trying to see if there's a way for me to potentially get to a guard mode this turn. Now that I've ordered the Volmol, that's not really an option, um, but it does fill up my hand, which is really nice. And I do have the other floating blue, so even if I wanted to search, I could just turn off his Black Witch for the turn. that point in time we just pass we say we want to leave up our floodgates here we're we're certainly in a good spot being at 4500 life uh and we, it's better for us to keep as much of the stack uh the taxing of uh against you as possible does try to go use a garion to shoot something um but then i point out that he can't because all of my stuff has barrier so there's nothing for him to have been able to hit so he just has to keep that Garion back in his hand. Because Garion does not hit entities. He just hits J slash, or he just hits resonators. does choose to use Prisius Big Show just to see what those top decks options are. And then it looks like we do have a Kaguya enters the game of gods to at least draw it into his hand. This feels very suboptimal. It does set him up to be able to potentially again use that feasting for cost of two. But at this point in time, cancels aren't going to be very effective. He does draw into a Hanzo, but that doesn't do him any good um, because of the witch at this point. Um, so the idea being that um, cancels aren't going to be very good right now because I'm already like ahead. So like, I don't need to resolve cards to be able to try to win the game. Um, he's, he's on the back foot at this point. Does try to go ahead and order the Hanzo. Again, he does have two floating wheel available to be able to make moons. The problem inherently with this is I'm going to kill the Hanzo in response, um, using 
like it's gonna happen um he does have a feasting oh, oh this is a good play to be able to make use of the feasting asking him to determine what the x value is um You could use one of the will from Hanzo to cancel me trying to kill it. The problem is there's not a situation here where um, because I have the Volmo, even if even if David somehow finds a situation to be able to produce will off of this Hanzo, like make more moons off of this Hanzo. It's certainly not enough to kill me. Um, and even then, um, it's certainly not enough to kill me. And even then next turn before recovery, I will just turn off the Hanzo. Um, he does actually just let me kill it successfully, which I think is after producing will with the stones, he doesn't even try to um, invest uh, any will into the Hanzo here. Um, we're going to go ahead and before the Kaguya enters effect, the Kaguya effect ends up resolving to make another moon. We're going to try to do Loki enters the game of gods and see what happens. Um, David did float green white at this time. Um, so he could do number 13 here. Um, he could also use the feet sing. Um, does end up deciding to use the feet sing. I don't have the will to be able to pay for it. So that Loki enters the game of gods is just gonna fizzle um he can then uh he still has one will left at this point we're gonna go ahead and do keep the faith uh keep the faith to target the mistletane in my graveyard um this does lock me out of being able to use my volmo but the idea is you only have a white left so there's not really a cancel you have that can do anything there um i want as many bodies on board as possible it is the march of the four fours um to finish the game off so he spends the white to get a um moon or he gets the moon off of kaguya spends the white into the hanzo because he had declared the x value of hanzo to be one gets another moon um ultimately it looks like he does potentially forget to call stone here yeah it does just pass the turn so a little bit of a misplay forgetting to call stone i'm not sure exactly what calling stone would do to help here the prissias are locked out the garion can't touch any of my stuff because it has barrier sets him up to potentially be able to do number 13 but again i have so much stuff on board that can just push through for lethal that i'm not sure there's much that he can do here swings with the lucifer takes down to 11 swings with the melfi he blocks with the feasting swing in with the mistletane to try to take him down to three there's enough things on board uh, that at this point in time i've got three other four i've got four four fours to deal 800 damage and he only has one blocker so regardless of what he does the damage on board here is lethal it's just a matter of how fancy do i get to be during my turn um to try to finish it off in a flashy way So he decides to take the Mistletane damage, and we say, okay, cool. So we do get to be a little bit more flashy than we want. We're going to go ahead and first play Starving Beast, which is going to get to try to kill my J Ruler, but it has Eternal, so it won't die. I still get the 10 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and I still draw a card. Because Starving Beast doesn't say, and if you do, and my J Ruler has Eternal, so we're good to go. Going to go ahead and cast a Dolly, and here's the flashy finish. We use Dolly to bounce the Lucifer back to hand, and then recast the Lucifer to drain him out for lethal. Again, if he had called the other stone, it would have been able to do Garion or uh, number 13 there, but ultimately the swings on board would have been enough anyway. Thank you guys so much. Again, check out XD's profile for the Loki deck. It is super awesome. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying, class dismissed.